Hello everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for your interest in our beautiful national native Russian breed. Uh, well known from the ancient times, you know, since the time well known worldwide. This breed could be considered is the uh, symbol or image of Russian sinology and it is a really pearl with a very special construction with a very special conformation and movement. So before to tell you about the specifics of this unique breed, I would like to tell you about approach I'm going to use when I give the comments to the standards. And this approach is the model approach, which includes two models. The biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. Uh, the construction, the specific of the Borzoi conformation is quite not easy. That's why this approach, in my opinion, is required uh, to give the deeper explanation for the better understanding of this unique breed. So, Катюша, я вас попрошу дать мне две картинки Борзую со всеми линиями и черного терьера. Sorry, sometimes I'm talking uh, to Katya in Russian, but if you like, we can communicate in English, of course. Uh, in front of you at the screen, you can see two our pearls, Borzoi and uh, Russian Black Terrier. Borzoi was a symbol of perfection from the ancient times, as well as the Russian Black Terrier is the modern symbol of perfection created by talented Russian breeders rather short time ago. Both of them are really pearl. But why did I ask you to put on the screen the Black Russian Terrier? Because it is the very nice example which can help me to illustrate what does it mean by mechanical model of the dogs, which in the full volume is valid for the majority of the dog breeds, and uh, maybe better for the overwhelming majority of the breeds. Borzoi constructive model is unique and its uh, constructive model is a result of the modification of the classical model which is illustrated but by black russian terrier i said to you now that uh, this model is valid for the majority of the breeds but there are some exceptions and borzoi belongs to this exception so, to understand how and why this classical construction illustrated by Black Russian Terrier was modified to the Borzoi, I have to tell you about the principle included in the biomechanical model. Biomechanical model is the integrity of several postulates. I will tell you about uh, during my lecture, not only uh, about the biomechanical, also about the harmonic model of the dogs. The model approach is included in, in my doctoral dissertation. Uh, I defend it in the field of biology. That's why all statements uh, I will tell you are do belong not to the field of the hypothesis, but to the field of the scientifical proven facts. So you can trust 
we can fully trust to these statements. So, the first postulate of the biomechanical model is 2, 1, 1. What does it mean? That the spinal column is divided by the anatomical uh, divisions uh, according to ratio 2, 1, 1. When two units fall on the thoracic part of the spine or actual back, one unit falls on the loin and last one unit falls on the sacrum, which is a upper part of the group. This postulate, this principle, is very important, not because of the first place among other postulates, but because of its value. Why? Because this proportion, when it is used in breeding program, will provide several very positive features of the building. Strong top line as the whole, compact body, I mean short coupled or short in loin, deep chest and in the first approximation correct angulations in front and in the rear as well and as the balance. Next postulate is the principle of a right angle by the axis of the pendulum. Uh, I can uh, uh, call uh, conditionally pendulum uh, the angle created by two lines is along the shoulder blade median line, blue line, first one, and uh, the second blue line is connecting hip and iliac tuber. And uh, this is the point of intersection. So this angle is 90 degrees. Uh, what is the sense, what is the reason uh, of this postulate? Two reasons. This line uh, creates preconditions of the balanced movement. I mean, they create preconditions of the equality of the front and hind stri stride. And the second reason is that the slant or slope of the shoulder blade and iliac bone, slant of this and slant of this, is not independent. And the dependency is based on the right angle on the, at the axis of the pendulum. Third postulate, named principle of two horizontals. The first horizontal line between A and B is connecting humerus scapula joint and hip joint. The second, C, D, is, connected, is connecting elbow joint. Please be uh, careful. Not ulna, not elbow ulna, but elbow joint and knee joint. That means that the humerus scapula and uh, hip lie on one level, on one horizontal line as well as the elbow joint and knee joint lie on another horizontal level or they are placed at the same level. 
This principle is in charge, sorry, just a moment, is in charge of the influence horizontal position of the spinal column when moving, when trotting. Because when dog is trotting, these two uh, green lines are oscillating contrary. And the, the mutual oscillation uh, is compensating oscillation each of them. That's why all violation resulted by dog's movement are softened and uh, they do not change the horizontal position of the spine, which is very important because the multi thrusts when dog is trotting are transmitting from the rear, from the iliac bone, to the front, along the top line. And when the top line is level, is horizontal, that means that the dog should not work to lift center of gravity. And that's why it helps the dog when moving to be not tiring. We can see here just a sloping top line and uh, at the same time the spinal column is practically level, not sloping. And this slope is resulted by the length of the spinous processes which height is decreasing from the withers to the tail set. The principle of two vertical line lines yellow. In the beginning it's red and then you can see uh, it is continued by yellow color here uh, and here. Uh, can help to get the optimal meaning of the front angulations and the rear angulations. The first vertical uh, is created by the position of the elbow joint, which is placed exactly under the top of the withers, while the knee joint is placed exactly under the tail set. I will not give you now the details which can uh, help you to understand why it has happened and how do they um, create these positive results. Uh, it is a special um, topic and uh, should you are interested in full detailed explanation I would suggest you to read my book, Doc Confirmation and its Evaluation, available in UK in our docs. So, two verticals are in charge of the optimal meaning of the front and all rear angulations. Moreover, elbow joint exact, is exactly under the withers and knee joint is exactly under the tail set. That means that we have special mobile support of the spine from the beginning to the end and this mobile support is also in charge to soften uh, the violation appearing when dog is moving. There are some other, some other postulates, but I will not mention them here because we will not use it when uh, uh, considering and analyzing the dog confirmation uh, on the example of Borzoi. Now, let us 
look at the picture of Brazoi. What we can f find here, that the top line from the beginning uh, of the with us to the tail set is divided by anatomical divisions uh, according to different ratio. When 1.7 falls on the back, 1.3 falls on the loin, and one unit falls on the sacrum. Uh, I will explain you this later on. Now I only uh, interested to, to show you the difference. This is the difference number one. Difference number two. The uh, angle by the axis of the pendulum is not 90 degrees like here, but it is an acute angle, approximately 60 degrees. The Humerus scapula joint and hip do not lie on one horizontal line. Line. They are placed on different levels and height at hips is more than height at elbow. And the difference is approximately 15 degrees between this green line and the, the horizontal line. At the same time, which is similar to the classical model, elbow joint and knee joint are placed on the same horizontal line. Why did it happen? And because of what? Uh, let us come back to the function of Borzoi, which was hunting dog, hunting, special hunting dog, with the most speedy movement. It's a typical gait is full gallop. Катюша, я вас попрошу дать две картинки. Где скелет Борзой на карьере и где заяц? Нет, предыдущую картинку. Да. So, the full gallop means that the dog is moving uh, in huge leaps. When the uh, and when dog is um, landing the hind legs placed in front of the forelegs, like in the in case of hair. Uh, this parallel is not accidental because hunter and prey are developed in the same uh, in the same conditions of life, in the same terrain, in the same landscape. Look at the arch, look at the arch, look at the positions of the hind leg being a lot ahead of the front legs. And now, let us try to analyze why and how did it happen. Uh, coming back to the aim uh, of this hunting dog as Borzoi, very fast dog, moving uh, on uh, huge lips. They are so huge that the hind legs are in front of forelegs when dog is landing. That means that the hind legs 
have more swing than the forelegs. And how could it be provided? First of all, the hind legs should be of extreme length. Otherwise, they couldn't be placed in front of the forelegs. But how it could be realized, how it could be approached, what construction could be suitable for this kind of movement? Let us imagine that we are trying to lengthen the hind legs of the dog. It is not the illustration of the uh, statement, uh, statement and hypothesis. Uh, I'm going to um, set you out, but it is for the next step. So coming back to my uh, um, my explanation, let us try to lengthen hind legs and nothing else. Everything will be unchanged except the length of the hind legs. What will be, uh, what uh, will happen? In this case, a rump will be higher than the high, uh, than the width. And uh, what does it mean? In this case, front angulation will be exaggerated. The humerus scapula, not like uh, this picture, it is a, a picture of our um, final explanation. And the humerus scapula will be uh, approaching to the uh, acute angle. And the acute angle is a bad angle for the front assembly uh, because dog needs to spend a lot of efforts and uh, waste a lot of energy to unbend this uh, articulation. This dog with a such construction, which I will call overbuilt construction when the rump is higher than the widths, is not able to move long time. Too much uh, energy it will spend. This dog will be tiring in a short time and our goal will be not approached. So another idea is idea similar to here. When the top line is arched, and that's why, the longer hind legs could be placed under the body. How to uh, realize that? Let us imagine that normal dog without an arch top line, just a normal dog, similar in construction to the Russian black terror, we put on the chair with a small surface. It is very clear that the top line will be immediately arched while the angulations, front and rear, will be straightened. And this is also not a good idea because uh, straightened angulations do not give the dog to move uh, with the long strides. Unbending of these articulations will lead to the short strides or in front either in the rear. Also not a good way. But what could be uh, done further? Let us imagine that the spine, I mean the whole 
spinal arch, whole spinal column is suspended. Suspended so much that the under this spine could be placed longer elements of the rear. Then the question is where this point should be located and how high it should be suspended. Swing of the hind legs should be more than the swing of the forelegs to provide the full gallop, as we told already about. That means that the point of suspension, it seems to be, should be placed more far away from the rump. But if it is close to the withers, it will straighten uh, shoulder blade position uh, and uh, it will be it will uh, open too much humeral scapula and uh, shorten the front stride bad idea moreover in this case dog could be easily uh, turn over the head, I mean a uh, summer salted of the head uh, when catching the prey, not away. If we place the point of suspension in the region of the actual back, we have not to forget that the back is not so flexible as the loin because of the support it is supported by the breastbone but if we shift the point of suspended to the loin region we will decrease the distance to the rump and it will decrease the swing of the hind legs uh, it happens in case when the spinal proportions are 2, 1, 1. What happened in the reality? Mother Nature and uh, natural selection during several centuries led to another proportion of the actual back, loin and sacrum. And the ratio 1.7, 1.3, and 1 is typical in the average for the breeds, uh, for the Barzoi population, as well as for the best specimen of the breed. 1.7, 1.3, 1. Moreover, the top point of the spine is located on the first or second loin vertebra. Now, just a moment, very easy calculation. 1.3 and 7 vertebra. So, one vertebra length is about 0.2. 0.2, if it is this, uh, if we consider placement uh, on the second uh, loin vertebra, it means that first plus the second give us 0.4 plus, uh, look at the uh, this length, 1.7 plus 1, uh, plus, sorry, 0.4, it is a 2.4 one and if we consider placement on the first number vertebra it means that 1.7 plus 0.2 will give 1.9 so point of suspension is in between 
So, it is located in the middle of the top lane. The first or second loin vertebra are located in the middle of the top line, and there is the uh, region where um, top point of the spinal column is located. That means that in case of Borzoi, loin is longer than in the in case of other non sighthound breeds. But what is very interesting, and it is also very easy to calculate, that the length of the loin vertebra is one and a half times more than the length of the thoracic vertebra. And it was the reason why and how length of the loin increased. So, instead of 211, we have 1.7, 1.31, but if we consider the middle of the spine located at the first or second vertebra, that means that we still have Two, one, one, again. Why is it important? I will tell you when we come uh, back, uh, uh, when we will go to the harmonic model of the dog, where the explanation of, of this ratio, two, one, one, and its importance for the harmony of, of the dog will be fully explained. Next one. Uh, this angle is about 60 degrees. But when dog is moving, Katusha, I will ask you to give me a picture of movement. We When dog is moving, and uh, we can see here take off the beginning of the leap. You can see that the hip and humerus scapula do belong to one horizontal line. It could be easily explained. In this case, uh, this horizontal line uh, will help the dog to provide maximum of translational movement because this line is uh, parallel to the longitudinal axis of the dog to the long to the longitudinal um, line of the movement it is uh, when dog is leaping the dog is moving on leap and uh, it is the most important thing uh, because the uh, aim of this breed was hunting and hunting could be the best when dog is exceptionally fast on the move when dog is trotting you can see what is happening angle by the axis of the pendulum is beca becoming 90 degrees like in the classical case of the dogs not belonging to side hounds group and why uh, could it happen because when hind leg is unbending the pelvis is turning count, counterclockwise and this angle is approaching to the 90 degrees and this angle is important uh, for the span of the 
four legs. I will um, discuss it in more details when we will be reading the standard and uh, um, uh, analyze the part of the movement. Uh, next important thing is, as you can see, vertical lowered from this point of interse intersection uh, is an is also very special because the limbs when they are converging uh, when dog is uh, trotting they are converging to the base of this vertical this is very important because the center of gravity lies on this vertical line and uh, this condition provides um, the uh, special uh, situation. What do I mean? If the legs, especially the hind legs, which is for support of the body at this point um, are placed at the base of the line where is located center of gravity the dog movement uh, is not so wobbling of the movement is minimized what should i say moreover the vertical line lowered from the eye to the uh, paw at the moment of landing or close to it is could be considered as the criterion of the correctly extended trot. But as I told you, uh, the full explanation or more detailed explanation to be given uh, when reading the standard in part of movement. So, you can see how uh, the uh, lines of the... You can see the difference. Dog in stance and dog when trotting. And this is no less important uh, moment of the movement, providing the best translational movement of the dog. Once again, of details of modification, the constructive model in case of Borzoi. Top line proportions are changed to this range ratio. Loin is longer. Point, the top point of the top line is placed on the first or second loin vertebra. And uh, this is the middle of the top line. That's why the top line proportion from the width to this orange line and from this orange line to the yellow line uh, placed on the iliac tuber and further to the tail set are built according to the previous ratio two one one the Humerus scapula and hip do not lie when dog is standing anymore to the same level. Hip is higher than the Humerus scapula and the difference is about 15 degrees. While, like before, Elbow joint and knee joint lie on one horizontal line. Like before, elbow is under the withers. But the second 
vertical line is missing because in case of Borzoi, croup is sloping and uh, the upper thigh is much more slanted, much more sloped in the comparison to non uh, uh, sighthound breeds. But why still is it here? Because for Borzoi is extremely important that the spine, when uh, dog is landing, catching the prey, is supported the best by the elbows. For the moment, this is enough, I think. And uh, we can go to the harmonic model of the dogs. In the beginning, it will be classical model, and then I will explain what will remain and uh, what will be not valid for the Borzoi. Before to go to harmonic model of the dogs, I will tell you about the golden section. Because uh, harmony could be explained, could be created first and explained the second, by this principle, which is universal form building, building principle of harmony. What does it mean, golden section? It is a long story, and I can tell you a lot about this uh, subject, but not today. Today it will be uh, briefly, quite briefly. Uh, golden section uh, is the name given by Leonardo da Vinci. It was 16th century. But actual golden section as the principle was well known in the ancient time. We know pyramids in the ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Greece, Renaissance time. It, will, well, it was well known and uh, uh, very efficiently used. According to Euclid, who lived three centuries before Christ, golden section uh, could be determined as the division of the segment O1 into unequal parts, this one and that one, uh, if the whole segment, which length is one, one we can see here, to the biggest part, which is X, you can see X here, is equal to the ratio between X and smallest part, one minus X, we can see it here. This proportion could be easily transformed into square equation. And its positive root is this one. Square root from 5 minus 1 and all should be uh, divided to 2. Uh, for the third approximation, you can see this number, this fraction. For the most, uh, more rough approximation, it will be 0 0.62. And the last most rough approximation, it will be 0 0.6 or 3 to 5. Uh, in our practice, we will use this number instead of that. Doesn't matter that this is the rough approximation. When we are measuring the dogs, mistakes of our measuring is uh, exceeds uh, the, uh, I would say, tail of these numbers. So, for our practice, three to five will be enough. In the uh, 12th century, 
So, four centuries before Da Vinci and Luca Pacioli, I will tell you now who was here, another mathematician born in Pisa, Leonardo Fibonacci, uh, solved one problem, and its result was the sequence. Easy sequence. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and on. How it is built? 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, and on. Easy. If we modify this sequence like that, what are we doing here? We will divide each previous to the next member of the uh, sequence. One and divide to one, one. Then one divide to two, one second, two third, three fifth, five eighth, and on. What is important? that the limit of the sequence will be the same number. Limit of this sequence will be golden section. And we can find immediately the number we already mentioned here. But the most important thing is the next one. Uh, may I draw your attention uh, to these red numbers? One, one, two. Do they remind you anything you saw today during my lecture? Of course. It was two, one, one. It was the spinal proportions of the top line. And I would say that there is a moment of truth. Because according to these numbers, the ratio 2 to 1 and to 1 gives the dog construction, the initial tuning to the golden section. They, without these numbers, the harmony, which is in accordance with the golden section, could be reached. They are required as, as the base of harmony in the dot construction. That's why your kindly requested to keep in your mind that these two numbers should be checked when uh, you are examination the dog. It should be checked by your fingers and check if the anatomical divisions of the top line are built in the accordance to these three numbers. Uh, about Luca Pacioli. Luca Pacioli was the, the also mathematician, lived at the same time as the Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and he was the author of the book about the golden section named La Proporzia Divina or Divine Proportion. And Leonardo da Vinci was uh, the only illustrator of this book. But he renamed La Proporzia Divina to the golden section, Sectio Aureo, and uh, this name is now very well known, opposite La Proporzia Divina. 
but in the name La Proporzione Divina, you can see very deep sense because this is a proportion given from above, given by God. Now, we can go to the harmonic model of the dogs. We saw this picture already and can find here this ratio 2, 1, 1. The only second vertical line is shifted a little bit backwards to the uh, most high point of the top line. But anyway, you can, can find here the influence of the golden section. Uh, look at this vertical line. Uh, this is the elbow joint. This is the width top point. And this is the level, level where humerus scapula is placed. So, if we look at these proportions, we will find 2, 1, 1. Why? In the standard is written that the foreleg, that the height at elbows, is just a little bit more than half of the height. But it was because of the ulna. As usually you measure height at elbows at the level of the elbow ulna. And this is the elbow joint, which is placed lower than the ulna. So this distance is exactly half of the height at with us. Shoulder blade and upper arm are approximately of the same length and the same slope to the horizontal line. This angle and this angle are practically equal, contrary, slanted. So the vertical projections are equal and that's why it is not surprisingly to find here two, one, one. So the construction of the borzoi is according to the same ratio, either along the top line, this is the middle, and uh, this is also middle of the rest. So two, one, one. Uh, and uh, vertical ratio is also in accordance to the same two, one, one. So you can find out the influence of the golden section. This is the length of the body. <clears throat> I connect a sternum and buttock. Uh, please be careful. Not humerus scapula, but this point, which is placed a little bit ahead of the uh, shoulder point. And this is the end of buttock. And uh, this is the last rib, which can uh, explain what does it mean, length of the chest. This is the length of the chest. So length of the chest to the length of the body is golden section, three to five. Length of the body to the length of the diameter is three to five. Uh, what does it mean diameter? I connect occiput and the pole of hind leg. 
Uh, in case of Barzoi, the rear piston uh, uh, should be set um, a little bit slanted forward. But this is a small difference if I will say that the rear pistons are upright. This difference is very small. So usually we measure uh, distance between occiput uh, and uh, uh, rear piston, pore of rear leg, when the rear piston are placed behind the body to the vertical position. Of course, these points do not line, lie in one vertical plane. And uh, we are considering the projection to the vertical plane of this line. And this vertical plane is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. Height at elbow, I mean elbow joint, to the sum of head and neck length is golden section, three to five. Girth of the muzzle to the girth, girth of the skull or circumference the same is three to five. Uh, let me tell you something else, please. The best or more uh, famous, more well-known example of the harmony is uh, egg. I mean Easter egg, which Fabergé used as the symbol of the harmony. Why did it use it? Harmony is not only beauty for the eyes, but is the shape which have the optimal functions. In case of the egg, I can say that the egg is built uh, according to the golden section, namely, it's cross diameter to the longitudinal diameter is three to five. And it is practically impossible to destroy it squeezing evenly in your hands. So maximum durability is the result of the golden section shape. Don't forget that the aim was to protect the best embryo which is inside. So you can see this correlation between beauty, beauty and functions. In case of Borzoi, you can see the shape in some ways resembling the egg. And Borzoi should have maximum Max, maximal developed bite because it is a hunter. Try to remember in the past some borzois belonging to the special group were wolfhounds and uh, their uh, uh, task was to not only to catch the wolf but to hold him until hunter will be coming. Can you imagine how powerful should be the muscle and how strong should be the bite? That's why this proportion is required for this head. In the first look, at the first look, it could seem too fine. Uh, too refined, too aristocratic, but at the same time, it is extremely powerful. I told you about two approaches which could help me to explain some statements, some statements of the standard. In front of you, you can see 
gorgeous dog. He was a world winner, he got a lot of um, top titles, and he is really magnificent representative of the breed. Absolutely gorgeous specimen. Now, I can read you the standard, and from time to time, I will uh, take a break to explain uh, some uh, sophisticated points. So, uh, utilization, hunting sight hound, racing and coursing hound. Also is the hunting sight hound to be used mostly for the change in hair and fox less for wolf hunting. Combines high agility with the endurance and the ability to tackle a game deftly at once. Successfully used for the coursing and racing. Classification. Group 10, sight hounds. Section 1, long-haired of ranged sight hounds with working trials. Brief historical summary. The history of the Borzoi dated from the 15th century to the Mongol invasion. The Tatars used sighthound of uh, Arab origin, Kousi, while the Russian hunters did not have sighthounds. When hunting, they used extraordinary stroke Loshaya dogs, who were able to catch and kill a deer or even an elk. Kotsi and Loshaya crossbreed dogs became the prototype of the Barzoi. These dogs were depicted on the prayer book belonging to the Grand Prince Vasily III, Ivan the Terrible Father. In 16th and 17th centuries, new bloods of Polsky Hart, Polish Greyhound, added the nobility to their descendants. Having grown the fame of these dogs crossed the borders of the Russian Empire. Further development of the breed was influenced by crossbreed with a clock, a huge, strong, and fierce bearded Kurland sighthound. Their descendants became dogs without beards with long pine hair. They marked the beginning of Gustavsovi, Borsoi type. The bloods of Greyhound added to the breed in the same time initiated the appearance of Chistopsovi Borzoi type. Bloods of Mountain Gorski and Crimean sighthounds known by the endurers were used later. Just a moment. The Borzoi became the result of this multi breed crossing. The vigilance, agility, and expedition of Borzoi in pursing the game, its ability to flash like rush, to tackle the game deftly at once, its savageness and courage, all these important qualities proved out to be very useful when hunting the game in short, in irregular terrain. The Borzois were also successfully used for hunting in steps where it was required to work on longer distances. Hunt with large packs of sight hounds and hounds, and with the special horses, hunters, appeared in the 18th and 19th centuries. Such hunts consisted of up to several hundred dogs and differed from one another in type and working abilities. The personal hunt by, by Grand Duke Nikolai Nikolaevich was especially renowned for both the exquisite beauty of the dogs and their speed and passion for the game. The first Congress of Borzoi lovers was organized in 1874, but only in 1888, the Moscow Hunting Society adopted the first standard of the Borzoi, where a type of Borzoi was unified after all. Yermilov was the author of this standard. 
the fundamental principles of the standard still remain the same despite changes made in the 20th and 21st centuries. In 1925, 1939, 1951, 1963, 1969, 1980, 1993, 95, and 2006 years. After all sophisticated explanations regarding model approach, which I can understand was very tiring from you, especially without physical contact, when I could use my fingers for the best explanation, as you know. The Niels Bohr famous scientist told sometimes that that theory is that which is impossible uh, to tell uh, on fingers. <laughs> I tried to use my fingers, but from the distance. Sorry when it was not so efficient. Now, I would like to tell you one beautiful legend and maybe you will have a rest before we uh, start to read, read and analyze the standard. Uh, usually, the uh, origin of this name, Loshaya, people think, is based on uh, Losh. But there is another story, and this is a very beautiful legend. The wolf, leader of the pack, saw at the edge of the forest a horse. It was a mare. She was so beautiful that he fell in love. And uh, this feeling was mutual. They left the forest, uh, built their own house, and uh, a, a bit later, their son was born. He was named Loshaya Sabak. But the wolves, this pack could not forgive that the leader who betrayed the pack. They were looking for the suitable moment, attacked the house, killed the wolf and his wife, Mare, and the only child, Loshe Sabaka, was lucky to be hidden and he was survived. But everything happened in front of his eyes and he swore that until the end of his life he will kill and destroy the dogs. This is the story. Now, it's our reality and now it is a general appearance. Dog of aristocratic appearance, tall, lean and strong, harmoniously built, rather high-legged, fairly narrow in the body, slightly elongated format. Females are longer than males. Skin is thin, elastic without folds. Muscles lean, elongated, very well developed. Bone structure is strong, but not massive. Something um, about terms used in this part of the standard. Format. It is a special term in Russian synology. We are using the term format of the body when we divide length of the body to height at width. If they are equal, the dog is square body. If it is more than 100, the dog is elongated. 
or long body depending on how much it was elongated. Uh, important proportions. In males, the height at withers is equal or one to two centimeters more than the height at the point of sacrum. With us, sacrum. A little bit above this le uh, level or at the same level. In females, these two heights are equal. We have a lot of pictures and after the standard we will uh, look at them. So it will be time when everything could be illustrated. And I will try not to forget to remind it when we will see the bitches. The length of the body somewhat exceeds the height at with us. This is explanation of the format. The depth of the chest is equal to almost half at the height at with us. And uh, this uh, statement is very important. What we see in this picture uh, is uh, decorated by furnishing and what is inside is hidden. Look at this please. Brisket is at the level not really reaching the elbow alna. It's a bit higher. Why it is required? Because when dog finally is catching the prey, the dog can uh, bump his elbows against the low sternum, low brisket, and it will damage the brisket. Uh, in the old uh, English standard, um, it is written that the brisket should reach the level of the elbow which is required for the best development of the heart, lung and general blood vessels. But in UK, as I am aware, the borzos do not hunt. So this problem of uh, damaging do not, does not exist. But for the hunting dogs, this level of the brisket, which is placed a little bit higher than the elbow, Alna, is required. Let's go on. Where? Uh, so, let us stay here. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. The depth, the depth of the chest is equal to almost half of the height at with us. Of course, it's easy. Uh, this is the middle of the distance between uh, ground and uh, with us. And uh, the chest, uh, breast, uh, breastbone is placed a bit higher. That's why this depth is a bit less than the height at elbows. The height at elbows is slightly superior to half of the height at withers. As I told you before, usually the height at withers is measured at this point, which is elbow alna. And if we measure height at with us at the level of the elbow joint, these distances will be equal. 
height at width and uh, uh, this distance from the elbow to the top point of the width. And uh, this is based on the principle 211 I have told you before. This should be in the middle of this distance. Like this point should be also in the middle of the distance. Then 211 one are presented. Uh, the length of the muscle from the tip of the nose to the stop is slightly superior to that of the skull from the stop to the to the occiput. Other, uh, other, why, uh, other words with other words. The muscle is a little bit longer than the skull. Behavior, temperament. Temperament is calm. Visual response is well evident. Typical gates. Before the game to be found, slow trot and even walk. In chasing the game, full gallop. The attitude towards people is neutral to friendly. So, description of the head. Aristocratic, narrow, long in proportion to the general appearance, the head is so lean that the principal veins are shown through the skin. Viewed from the, viewed from the side, the top lines of the head from form a long, slightly convex line. Superciliary arches and zygomatic arches are not pronounced. Cranial region, skull, seen from above, narrow, elongated, oval-shaped. Uh, seen in profile, almost flat. Occiput is well pronounced. Uh, stop, hardly visible. Facial region, nose. Large, always black in any coat color, considerably prominent in relation to the uh, lower jaw. Uh, muzzle, long, lean, well filled out in all its length, straight or slightly down faced, slightly arched near the nose. Uh, length of the muzzle from the tip of the nose to the stop is slightly superior to that of the skull from the stop to the occiput. Lips, tight, well-fitting, fine, with black edging, whatever the coat color. Jaws, teeth. Teeth white, strong, incisors are closely spaced, canines are not too wide apart, Scissor bite. Level bite is permitted. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> but not desirable. Complete dental formula. The absence of third molars and one of 2P1 is acceptable. Uh, cheeks flat, not pronounced. Ears large, almost shaped. Uh, almond shaped, dark brown to brown, eyelids are with black ending, tight fitting. Катюш, мне понадобятся рисунки ушей. Рисунки? Там не рисунки, там вот они картинки. А, ну, фотографии. Mm -hmm. Хорошо, пусть будут фотографии. Да. Пусть будут фотографии. Yes. Yes. Small, thin, mobile, Pointed tipped. Covered with short hair. Set on above the eye level. Um, set closely and backwards, pointing towards the nape of the neck. The tips on the, of the ears are placed near each other, directly downwards along the neck and close to it. 
Um, when the dog is alert, the ears are carried higher. On the cartilage, the tips are directly sideward or, or forward. Sometimes one of both ears are erect like horse ears. Мы опять ушли от нее, да? Вам не нравится черный терьер рядом, да? Ну, мне как-то, ну, сколько можно? Ну, бог с ним, останемся. Ну, полосы уже. Ладно, не важно. Neck long, dry, muscled, slightly arched. Oval shaped, slightly flattened laterally, of medium set. I would like to explain a little bit more this statement. Катюша, мне понадобится Борзаев движение, где у нас... Нет, сначала мне понадобится принцип двух... Принцип соотношения высоты в локте и суммы длин головы и шеи. Это предпоследняя пропорция, если я правильно помню. Спасибо большое. Скорее всего, вот это. Нет, следующий. Вот это. Да, спасибо. So, please take a look. Length of the neck is depending on this condition. What is the requirement? Height at elbows to the sum of head and neck length creates golden section. What is the conclusion of this? Try to keep in your mind what you saw just before, these two red lines. If this ratio is provided, then uh, at the moment of landing or close to it, the vertical dropped from the ear is approaching to the paw of the foreleg. And it could be um, considered as the criteria of the normal, normally, just a moment, normally extended throat. Why is it so? Because the eye is a little bit in front of the ear. And in the ear, in the ears, are located vestibular apparatus, which is responsible for the acoustic equilibrium. So please uh, remember this sentence. Watch your step. The dog should be a little bit in advance to that. And this is provided by the ratio from the previous build. So, if this principle is provided at the moment of landing, the uh, dog reaches equilibrium. This is what is concerning length of the neck. Because if the neck is not long enough, uh, that could not be moved uh, forward enough. And then this vertical line connecting eye and paw of the front leg at the moment of landing will be not reached. So, now I believe it is clear. And uh, as you can see, without uh, our model approach, we could not explain this important point and explain why the neck should be long. Uh, body. Uh, ну хорошо, можно остаться здесь пока. Top line is smooth arch with a 
not marked. A back, broad, muscled, sup, supple, flexible. Uh, some short break, some additional explanation. As you can see, I consider as the actual back the thoracic part of the spine. Even there are several other definitions of the back. Uh, and the, on, uh, the only this definition gives me the possibility to consider proportions between actual back, loin and sacrum. And without this consideration, the main conclusion 211 could not be found. So, another thing, uh, supple and flexible. Of course, the back, the actual back, is not so flexible as the loin, because the loin is uh, deprived of any support from below. It is a mobile support, and actual back is immobile support because of the breastbone or brisket. But anyway, if the back is not flexible enough, then the whole top line could not be smoothly curved uh, from the beginning of the withers to the tail set. So, uh, and if it is not so flexible, then when uh, Borzo is hunting, it will not help him to uh, curve the whole top line, and that's why influence the amplitude of the legs, of the strides. So please, Draw your attention to this point. Loin, rather long, uh, arched, muscled, broad. Uh, one more stop. Rather long is clear. Arch is clear. Muscled also. Broad. Why do we require broad loin? Because unlike horses, the dogs have um, uh, processes not so wide. And the only uh, musculature which is developed uh, gives the uh, more wide loin. The wide loin is important because it withstands the uh, roll gate, the wobbling of the croup. This is also very important, but because everything should be directed to the uh, most correct um, translational movement without any deviations either aside or upwards in the point of rump. Together with the back forms the smooth arch, which is more pronounced in males than in females. Uh, as I promised, we will find out the pictures illustrate this statement. The highest point of the arch is in its middle. That is the region of the first or second lumbar vertebra. Lumbar or loin vertebra. Crew. Long, broad, moderately sloping. One more break. This is a moderately sloping crew. Because the whole uh, arch 
the, the whole arc, the whole curve of the top line, as it it is illustrated here, is really smooth without any breaks. Many times, especially on the west, when the borzois are not hunting, the group is too much sloping, and this is a fault. And uh, you have a criterion to understand if the slant is correct or no, because of this disposition of two joints. In case of very sloping group, this point will be placed lower and it should be higher than the horizontal line from the humerus scapula. The width of the group measured between the two iliac tubers must not be less than eight centimeters. Uh, very important, because if you remember, when a dog is moved uh, in leap, in leaps, at the moment of landing, the hind legs should be placed in front of the front legs, which uh, requires a big width of the croup and uh, of the set of the hind legs. So, when we are measuring sacrum between two iliac tubers, it is the sign of the width of the croup. Something else. Uh, why do I use the term sacrum? Which usually uh, it is called as rump. Because sacrum, it is a upper part of the croup. And inside the croup, you can find, when we see the dog from the side, two pelvis bones, or two pelvic bones, iliac and uh, sciatic bone, plus muscles, plus tendons in this, located in this region, all together, it forms the croup. Uh, chest, oval in cross-section, deep, not narrow, yet not wider than the croup, let down almost up to the elbows joints. Also clear, because otherwise uh, hind legs and front legs at the moment of landing will be in the wrong position. Viewed from the side, the forward chest is somewhat prominent, not too much, and places almost at humor scapular level. In shoulder blades region, uh, the chest is rather flat, but towards the false ribs it gets gradually wider. It's also uh, clear uh, because this uh, requirement provides the movement of the uh, upper arm and especially elbows along the side of the brisket parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. Otherwise, um, the positions of the shoulder blades will be violated. Viewed from the side, the four chest is so, I read it already, definitely shortened to false ribs. Underline and belly abruptly tucked up towards the flanks. Tail, sickle or sabre-shaped, thin, long, with dense and abundant feather. Passed between the hind legs and flanks, it must reach up to the iliac tuber. When the dog is standing naturally, the tail hangs downwards. In movement, it is raised, but not above the back level. So, you can see.
go red. Too much above the level and down. Turn to a side when moving. It's correct. Uh, carried down and turned aside. Too much curled over the back. Okay? Four quarters. General appearance. Four legs lean. Uh, muscled. Seen from front perfectly straight and parallel. Shoulder muscles are well developed. The height at the elbows slightly superior to half of the height at the withers. We have already uh, told about that. Because height was measured from the ulna, not from the elbow joint. From the elbow joint, it will be exactly half of the distance between the ground and the top of the withers. Uh, shoulder blades are long and oblique. Upper arm long, moderately oblique. Angle of humerus scapula angle articulation is well pronounced. It's about 100, 110 degrees. Elbow in parallel planes to the medium plane of the body or slightly turned out in field. Let me explain you this point. Uh, in field, which means a little bit turned out. In the past, borzois were uh, divided in two, two different types, two different varieties. The first variety were not so leggy, were a bit stocky in the body, broader in the chest, stronger in bones, wider in uh, skull and cheeks, and the head was more massive. These dogs were for hunting against wolves. And you can understand that in this type, uh, the ribs were more sprung. And that's why elbow, while moving, was a little bit inclined aside. That's why this influence uh, we can find out even today. And usually it is correlated with the shape of the um, chest, with the shape of the ribs. Forearm, long, clean, of oval cross-section, seen from front, narrow, seen from side, broad, points of elbow strongly developed. That means that the bones of the foreleg are flattened. From the sign, uh, side, uh, they are rather wide. From the front, rather narrow. Typical for Borzoi. Pastels, rather long, slightly oblique. Also important point. One more time, I tell you about the uh, dangerous moment could happen when uh, prey is uh, catched. Um, straight pastures usually are correlated with a more open uh, humerus scapula angulation. Then a straight or upright pastern and usually correlated with it cat foot are dangerous because in this case when borzoi catched the prey uh, it can 
uh, turn of the head or somersault of the head. So the slightly inclined, slightly, slightly slanted uh, pastors is the sign usually of the correct front angulation and they prevent the danger I told you now about. Uh, hindquarters. General appearance, lean, bony, muscled, well angulated. Uh, seen from behind, straight and parallel. Set slightly wider than four quarters. When the dog stands naturally, place slightly behind. The vertical line dropping from the point of buttock. This is the point of buttock. Sciatic tuber must run along the front edge of the hock and repastum. The vertical line from the sciatic tuber should be in front of the rear person close to it. All the articulations are well angulated. The hindquarter muscles are very well developed, especially on the upper thigh. A thigh, upper thigh, long and strong. Lower thigh, strong as long as this thigh. Hop joint, white, dry, with a well-developed heel bone. A hind feet, lean, narrow, of elongated oval shape called hair feet. Tooth long, arched, tight, nails long, strong, touching the ground. Now I would like you to describe with more details the structure of the, the three points. Iliac tuber, uh, hip joint, and sciatic tuber are placed not on one line, but create very blunt angle. And the upper thigh of the hind leg placed behind the body should be perpendicular to this sciatic bone. Why? It is well known that the 90 degrees angle is provided the best economical conditions for the functioning of the joint. Deviation from this angle will lead uh, to the wrong direction of the motive thrust sent to um, iliac tuber and uh, to uh, necessity to spend much more energy for movement when the um, articulations are unbended. So, this is the bone where extensors are placed. Extensors are unbent muscles. And the uh, big surface here is required for the best development of these muscles. Uh, regarding the uh, upper thigh, which you can imagine, placed uh, forward uh, creates right angle with the iliac bones because here are placed the bending muscles or flexors. So it should be in the focus of your attention. Hi, so I read it already. Uh, gait, movement. 
In everyday life, the typical gait is the extended, free, easy trot. When hunting, the gait is full Russian gallop. I have already told about this picture, but it is an important uh, part of the standard. So, I would like to repeat it. We are saying that the uh, movement is balanced when, first, length of the front and hind strides are equal. As you can see here, the legs, especially the hind leg, approaching to the landing to and uh, supporting of the whole weight of the body at this moment and the front leg are converging uh, to the base of the vertical lowered from the axis of the pendulum this will provide the more stable movement they it will minimize the wobbling of the dog when moving it is easy to understand uh, let me uh, give you an example try to imagine that you are in the bus and uh, the question is where should you stand uh, uh, that wobbling for you will, would be minimized of course, you can stand in the center of gravity. The same is here, because center of gravity is located here. So, this is the second condition, which uh, should be in focus of your attention when uh, evaluating movement. Next one. The span of the limbs, when a dog is um, almost landing or close to be landed, uh, sh the should span of the limbs should be inscribed in this right angle, which create borders of this amplitude. And the last one, as you remember, is the vertical line which connects, uh, connect, connects eye and paw of the front leg uh, at the moment of landing uh, or close to it is required and should be considered is the criterion of the extended trot and condition of the equilibrium uh, at the moment of landing. Skin. Thin, elastic, tight, fitting with no wrinkles. Coat. Long, supple, silky, light, wavy or forming large curls. Small curls are permitted. permitted. The hair of different length on different parts of the body. On the head, the ears, and the interior side of the limbs. The hair is very short, close lying. On the back and the neck, the hair is longer and often wavy. On the outer side of the thighs, thighs and the side is shorter and may form finer curls. The feathering is rather long and shining. The feather is located on the neck, uh, forming a muff on the lower side of the chest and belly. On the back side of the forelegs and thighs, the feather is from below the tail 
we will have another pictures for that. Um, and the root, at the tail root, the curls are usual. Color, white, pale of different shadings, red phone, gray phone, silver phone, pale with a light gray shading, light red or light gray at the root of the hair with a darker red or gray main color, red with black overlay hair, often combined with a dark muzzle, sable, gray from ashy to yellowish gray, brindle, pale or red, or gray main color with a dark stripes, like stray on, on marble. Red, black, transitional colors between the red and black. All colors may be solid, pied and with tense. Typically any color tends to lighten up to downwards. It, very important. I repeat this sentence, please. Typically any color tends to lighten up downwards. Any colors from white to black in any combinations are acceptable, except of brown, blue, Isabella, lilac, and their shadings, uh, namely dilute colors with not black nose. Desirable height at with us, males, 75-85, females, 68-78, Faults. Over or under size by two centimeters against indicated in the standard. The length of the body more than 10% or less than five, superior to the length at with us. Uh, eyes not big enough, deep set, round in shape, light, all shades of hazelnut. Teeth small, diastemas between teeth, Absence of one of two PM2, absence of one or more incisors due to the injury, if the bite is clearly evaluated. Top line is not smooth enough, pronounced with an arch not symmetrical. The highest point of the top line evidently shifted towards the group. Belly insufficiently tucked up, punchy, pendulous. Tail a bit short, too high in carriage, with a lateral deviation, with curled end. Abundant flex on the body of the same shade as the base color. Too straight, furry, dull, dazzled coat. Fringes of featherings poorly developed, lacking in the feathering. Equal length of the coat all over the body. Code to harsh in shedding. Severe faults. Head coarse uh, with loose, thick skin, pendulous lips, seen from profile, blunt muzzle, due to the nose not prominent enough. Very pronounced stop. Bleached, not dark enough color of the nose. Eyelids or lips in all colors, partly depigmented pink nose, lips, eyelids without signs of injuries, eyes small, yellow, weak sighted, the third eyelid too much developed, absence of any teeth not mentioned, and the faults. Yes, low set. Not placed closely directed downwards along the nape of the neck, set wide apart, too big, thick, heavy, coarse, with a tough cartilage, with the rounded tips. The length of the body in the length is the length of the body more than 12% or less than 3% superior to the height at with us, over or under size by more than 2 centimeters. Neck set high or low, round in cross section. Sloping top line from well pronounced withers towards the root of the tail, 
pronounced roached back, straight back in males, loin narrow, short, too long, the length of the loin is comparable to the length of the back, straight, belly, not tucked up, forearms massive, with bones round in cross sections, uh, fleshy feet rounded or flat, splayed toes, tail short, thick, with no feathering, vivid flecks on the body of different color than main color, color on the body not lightened up downwards, abundant coat on entire body, excessive undercoat, rough, hard, bristle coat, not in shading, lack of feathering, disqualifying faults, aggressive or overly shy dogs, any dogs clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities, color, brown, including cocoa, coffee, chocolate, blue, Isabella, lilac, dilute colors with the tip of nose other than black in color, completely depigmented pink nose, iris, lips, eyes, of all shades of gray, green, blue, eyes of different colors, teeth, overshot or undershot, wry mouth, incomplete in sizes, if densely spaced, missing at least one canine, if not broken, lack of correct interlock of the upper and lower canines, jaws non-locking, legs knuckling over, presence of dew claws, tail, corkscrew, broken, fused vertebra, docked even partially. And not a vein, male animals should have two apparently normal testicles fully descended into scrotum, only functionally and clinically healthy dogs with very typical conformation should be used for breeding. Okay, now uh, let us uh, sum up. Uh, let us remember the harmonic proportions. When judging, when evaluating the borzoi, you have some reference points which could help you to be more objective. They are indicated on these pictures in front of you and could be easily checked. So, first of all, Top line proportions. When touching the top line, you have to find out the top point of the spine. And it should be placed in the middle of the whole top line. And the rest should be divided, divided by iliac tuber by two equal parts. So, it is two, one, one. And this point, according to the uh, anatomical divisions, is 1.7, 1 1.3, 1, 1. You should not keep in your mind this numbers, because nobody will measure them when judging, but you can immediately find where is the border between the actual chest and the line, and between these two vertical lines, you have to find out maximum two vertebrae. Very often, this point is shifted backwards. Then it destroys the symmetry of the top line. It is visible 
sometimes it is uh, emphasized by the code, so your hands will help you uh, to check what is reality. The shoulder joint and hip joint do belong to a somewhat oblique line. So, the hip joint should be placed somewhat above the humerus scapula level, while the elbow joint and knee joint should be on the same level. And it could be checked easily. And it, it will also increase the objectivity of your judging. Uh, to understand if the vertical proportions are correct, uh, you have uh, the criterion. Elbow joint is in the middle of the distance from top of the withers to the ground, or divides the height at withers into equal parts. Uh, and it gives you also possibility to check if the humerus scapula elements uh, are of the same length and uh, oh, this point should be under the withers, which will help you to understand if it is a maximum of front angulation of humeral scapula, because it is impossible to put um, backwards, more backwards, the elbow. It is the limit. So it, it will be the real humeral scapula angle. So let's go on. Loin is rather long. Usually, the length of the loin and distance from the last rib to the hip are correlated. But in case of Borzoi, it should be a bit different. Even the loin is rather long, this distance should not, not be long and even rather long, because the uh, correct proportions, correct uh, longitudinal proportions of the body uh, should be built according three to five, or three to five. So, you have also the way how to check if this distance is short enough. Because it is a uh, result of the long chest. Because of the false ribs, well laid back. So, one more time, slant uh, towards the rump, slant back of the false ribs will lengthen length of the chest, which will provide correct proportion between length of the body and length of the chest. Let's go on. This could be checked only visually, but you have to understand what is the reason uh, when uh, we are when we order this uh, ratio three 
to five. Uh, when dog is moving, head is moved forward and hind legs are moved uh, backwards. Uh, and uh, um, the legs from the opposite side are converging uh, to the vertical line uh, dropped from the uh, axis of the pendulum. The oscillation of this blue line uh, is around the golden section length. And this is the golden section length. Uh, and uh, this can explain you uh, that uh, when you find out the dog with a short neck or with, or with not enough angulated the rear, then this dog will move uh, not so uh, with not so extended trot because this correlation will be destroyed. So one more time, length of the body and length of diameter are correlated. The more hind leg is placed behind when the dog is moving, the more forward head and neck are moved forward. Uh, this uh, ratio uh, could not be measured in the ring when judging, but but when that ratio between two red lines uh, is presented, then this vertical line will connect the eye and paw of the front leg at the moment of landing or close to it, and it will be considered if the criterion of the extended trot. When the foreleg cannot reach the base of this vertical line, <clears throat> you can understand that it is because of the violation uh, ratio between two red lines at the previous picture. So, let's go on. Следующую золотую пропорцию, нет? Uh, что у нас там было? Наверное, следующее касается соотношения морды и череп. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Морды и черепа – это где? Mm -hmm. Я думаю, что последнее. А, uh -huh. наверное. В другую сторону. Это вот это, да, вот она. Mm -hmm. Да. And uh, this is the criterion of the correct ratio between volume of the muzzle and volume of the skull. So, I believe that this model approach could help you when uh, evaluating the dog's Borzois conformation. Now let us look at the different pictures and we will uh, describe them, the pictures. The only thing I would like to repeat once again, as I told before in the previous lectures, I do not evaluate the dog. I evaluate picture of the dog placed in some moment. It could be 
um, good moment, it could be not so good mo moment. Uh, so please t keep in your mind. As I told you already, this is an absolutely gorgeous representative of the breed. Medium long body, there is a lot of furnishing. So this is the shoulder joint or humerus scapula. Here could be sternum. This is the buttock. Uh, look at the top line. Smooth top line, practically at the same level with us and iliac tuber. Slightly arched with a long aristocratic head, a long neck, with a deep chest, excellent front angulations, uh, straight forelegs with slightly inclinated forward pastels, and excellent rear angulations, strong in bones, excellent coating with a correct coat regarding distribution of its length on the body, head and all parts of the dog. It's not surprisingly that he is a world winner. Uh, so, enjoy this dog. We can move. This is an example of the bitch. Where is it visible that the body is longer than by the male, which is correct. Uh, slightly long bodies. And uh, this picture, I will uh, explain to you the reason why the bitches are longer in the body than the females, than the males, sorry. Uh, Usually, when I'm asking what is the re uh, reason for the elongation of the female's body, people told me because of the loin. This is not true. The loin proportion, the uh, spinal proportions do not depend on the sex. They are absolutely the same. And you can uh, uh, check it. Uh, measuring the best specimen of the breed, males and females. But what is the reason uh, for the lengthening of the body? The main difference between dogs and uh, bitches is the croup. Bitches should be should bring the puppies. That's why they sciatic bone are longer, here is the um, hip joint, is it placed. Uh, length of the sciatic bones is more than by males. But last rib, its uh, back edge is here. And if we lengthen the body because of the um, buttocks, then ratio three, uh, oh, uh, sorry, it's better to say five to three will be violated. This part will be longer than before. And the only way to restore harmonic proportion, to restore correct ratio between chest part and uh, uh, hind part is to develop a little bit more for chest. And you can see here, length of the bitch's body is increasing because of two phenomena. Sciatic bones are a bit longer and for chest is developed a bit more. So you have um, you have in front of you beautiful bitch with an aristocratic head, long neck. Top line is typical for the bitch. It is more flat than in the 
males. And it matches the requirement of the standard. Look at the angulation, perfect angulation in front, slightly sloping top uh, pastels, and correct angulations in the rear. This is the buttock, and this is the vertical line close to the inner part of the rear pastel. Uh, about the ears. Uh, too thick, too heavy, wrongly directed, uh, with the rounded tips. Almost the same is here. If you see in uh, this picture, uh, the main, the general expression will be nice, Borzoi. But small detail concerning the ears, you can see the fault. You can see that the ears are set a bit too low with the wrong direction. Correct direction, pointed ends, small ears. It is the example of the sloping top line. It is an example of the correct top line. You can see height at the villas and height at the ramp or at the elect tuber are at the same level. And uh, the top point is in between here. And the arch is symmetrical. You can see these dogs uh, viewed in front. The correct uh, width of the front and narrow. Uh, correct front angulation, rather low carried neck, uh, to upright, to vertical carried and set neck, and straight front, straight upper arm, forearm, and uh, straight pastels. So you can see uh, in, from this angle, uh, distance between the forelegs and hind legs, which are placed more wide. You can see also the length and shape of the tail. You can see top line even from this angle uh, which is looks quite smooth and uh, rather low carried. Uh, so already uh, seen. It's a beautiful example of correct movement. Uh, look. Uh, Absolutely perfect top line, smooth, not so arched uh, compared to the uh, standing, but this is correct. And uh, uh, if we find another picture, I will um, explain why. Uh, correct place uh, limbs under the body, close to the landing moment. Uh, right angle, which determines the span of the limbs. And high and uh, uh, front paw belong to one or, uh, vertical line. That's it. Also correctly carried tail. So this is, it was the male, this is the female. You can see the same features I described uh, be, just before. But the top line is not so arched and this is quite correct and typical for the bitch. The rest uh, I will not describe because uh, because of the same 
uh, qualities. Beautiful male. Uh, moderately long body with a correct top line with us and uh, rump or iliac tuber are on the same height. Um, excellent uh, length of the forelegs. This is the level of the elbow joint. It is exactly the middle. Uh, noble head in this angle neck uh, could be uh, described uh, as the long enough, but this is because of the angle. Usually slant of the upper arm and its length and slant and the length of the neck are similar. It could be easily explained if uh, you imagine that we have a liver neck, shoulder blade, and upper arm create the liver. When neck and upper arm are handles of this liver, and normally that should be equal in the length and slant. Deep chest, excellent angulated in the rear, and uh, looks masculine, which is absolutely uh, correct as the illustration of the difference between the sexes. Uh, this is the same dog which was uh, on the move. Also uh, moderately long-bodied. Uh, top line is more arched than uh, when he was trotting. I will give the explanation of that. Um, not exactly picture, pictured not exactly in profile, so length of the neck and uh, slant of the upper arms are a little bit, uh, how should I say it in English correctly? They do not reflect their reality because uh, humerus scapula is of correct angle and elbow is under the withers and their rear uh, legs are placed behind so much when uh, vertical lowered from the buttocks is uh, just a little in front of the inner side of the rear pasta. Uh, about the difference uh, in standing and in movement. The dog in stance. You saw at the previous picture. And the same dog you saw a little bit before when he was, it was moving. When the dog was standing, the top line was a little bit more arched when it was moving. Uh, the arch was uh, uh, not so much expressed. Uh, why? Look at this, please. And try to imagine. When dog is moving, what is happening? The hind legs articulations are straightened. They are unbending. And that's why the pelvis is a little bit turning counterwise and is it not so much sloped as in standing. That's why top line is becoming less arched. They, I cannot find out the better picture to explain 
But the main thing, uh, I would like to repeat it, that in uh, movement, when dog is trotting, and uh, its hind legs are unbended, uh, the pelvis is becoming not so sloping. It is turning a bit counterwise, and that's why the top line arch is um, expressed a little bit less. The top line, when moving, is not so arched. So, let's come back to the pictures. Look us, let us look at this beach. A square-bodied beach. With some uh, very nice details like top line, depth of the chest, length of the forelegs, beautiful shape and length of the head, long and uh, rather low set and carried neck. Uh, the uh, demerits is concerning her uh, hind quad. Uh, the uh, upper thigh region uh, could be wider if the buttocks will be better pronounced. Length of the sciatic bones could be better, could be longer. And you can imagine, you can uh, paint in your mind, in your imagina imagination, that if we lengthen the body here, format will be becoming correct. So the problem is not enough developed sciatic bones, not enough pronounced buttock. So gorgeous beach. Uh, moderately long-bodied, with a beautiful top line. Uh, we cannot uh, say exactly how long is the neck because of the angle of the of the moment of picturing. Correct front angulations. Elbow is exactly under the withers. Slightly sloping pastels. Excellent angulated behind. Uh, and beautifully coated. Noble beach. Noble. Let's go on. Uh, three different pictures. A little bit sloping top line. A little bit uh, straight in front. Front assembly could be developed better. Either um, Humeral scapula, um, upper arm could be uh, sloping more, and fore chest could be pronounced more. Excellent angulated behind, with the correct depth of the chest. Long neck, uh, muzzle is a little bit snipey. Uh, nice bitch with an excellent body length, correct top line, symmetrical and smooth, good depth of the body, feminine head, uh, difficult to say what is the uh, reality of her front assembly, because uh, forelegs are moved a little bit forward. Maybe it, the, it is the result of, of the moment. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, elbows are practically under the withers, but forelegs are a little bit inclined forward. Correct rare angulations. It's a beautiful beach with just a little bit sloping top line, just a little. Excellent depth of the body, uh, uh, length of the body, 
correct depth of the body, correct length of the forelegs, nice long feminine head, quite long neck, top line is smooth and symmetrical, symmetrical. Um, front angulation is uh, okay, excellent angulated behind, excellent coated with a correct distribution of the coat all over the body. Uh, we already saw this picture. Here is the long-bodied beach with a, a rather straight top line, which is quite acceptable in case of the beach, um, with the correct length of the forelegs. Uh, and this picture head is not in profile, so difficult to say how does it look when it is exactly in profile, a rather long neck, uh, a bit straight in front, and a bit too um, soft in past. Excellent angulated behind, well coated. So the next one, already this picture. Um, uh, moderately long bodied beach. Uh, a bit too leggy, so distance from the ground to the brisket is a bit too much. Uh, top line is correct uh, to the iliac tuber, but a bit too slow, too sloping croup. Uh, almost equal in the length front and uh, hind strides, feminine head, long neck, enough coated. It's a beautiful bitch, excellent build, medium long bodied, with a perfect top line, deep chest, correct length of the uh, legs, feminine head, quite long neck uh, and uh, balanced movement. Front and uh, rear strides are equal. Span of the limbs fits the right angle by the axis of the pendulum and uh, eye and paw of the front leg lie on the one vertical line. Uh, in this case, at this moment, uh, medium long bodied with the, the top of the top line a little bit shifted <coughs> backwards. So it should be here and it is here just a little bit overbuilt. This point is a little bit higher than the feminine head, long neck, correct eye and front paw position. They belong to one uh, vertical line. Uh, and uh, span of the limbs uh, fits the right angle by the axis of the pendulum. This is the right uh, long bodied beach with the highest point a bit shifted backwards. So the top line could be more symmetrical. A bit overbuilt. Iliac tuber is a bit higher than the withers. Uh, balanced gait because of the equality of the strides front and rear. A bit too high set and high carried neck. Feminine head. This one. A bit too light in general bitch. Medium long bodied, a bit leggy, 
bones could be stronger. Uh, a rather long neck, uh, a rather long head uh, should be uh, more parallel regarding uh, bridge of the nose and uh, profile of the skull. A little bit light in muzzle. Uh, among merits, front and hind strides are equal. Top line is correct. Uh, tail set a little bit too much uh, curved at the tip. Uh, we have already saw this picture. Uh, maybe it is the same bitch. Long bodied, a bit too overbuilt, uh, with a arched arch, with the arc, which could be more symmetrical because of the highest point, which is somewhat shifted backwards. Uh, feminine head, medium long neck, uh, equal strides, front and uh, rear. Well coated with the correct distribution of the coat all over the body. Ah, that's all. You won't believe, but we... Okay. okay. Final destination. <laughs> Okay, dear participants, uh, probably my lecture was a bit too sophisticated in the beginning. Uh, you have the possibility uh, uh, to come back to this model approach reading my book. I can understand that if you don't know this approach, uh, it could be not so easy to accept it because of unusual unusual way of assessment. But anyway, these models have the universal character. They could be used for any breeds. And in case of Borzoi, it was especially developed after I finished working on the biomechanical model of the dogs without exceptions. And Borzoi, like other dogs of this sidehound group, uh, are an exception. And it was done special research during two years uh, when I was able to watch and measure 100 56 Borzois at the Moscow and the Russian shows. After that, uh, this material and the results of my measurement uh, gave me the idea how to explain this modification happened in case of Borzoi in the comparison to the other breeds. So this is one of the most difficult breeds for judging. So please uh, try ca to come back to these ideas when reading my book. I noticed already. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your understanding and patience. Uh, Nikki, interesting as usual, and thanks for the legend of Doshe. The person who is here again. Uh, we have. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Nikki. In the question section, if. Yes, please. Why are the measurements for the top line proportions to arrive at the golden rat, uh, ratio on the Russian black terrier measured to the uh, hip socket, but on the body they are measured to include the Asiatic uh, tuberosity buttock? Uh, no, 
No, this is a misunderstanding. The length of the top line in both cases, either in Black Russian Terrier or in case of Borzoi, are measured similarly. I mean, the beginning of the top line is the beginning of the thoracic part of the chest. This is the first thoracic vertebra, close to the junction, close to the uh, joint connecting neck and uh, actual back. Then, to be followed to the lumbar region and uh, after the iliac bone, uh, this line follows to the root of the tail, not to the buttocks. It is really misunderstanding. Way of measurement was absolutely the same. Some more questions? No, no. I think I think everything is clear. No more questions. No more questions. Oh my goodness! The participants, the, the participants, got tired. I can imagine. Me too. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes. Okay, then we are saying goodbye till next Tuesday, and next Tuesday we will have uh, Central Asia Shepherd Dog. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Try to have a rest. A little. Bit. Yeah. I will take a rest. <laughs> yeah. And you too. As I say, never too tired to hear you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. Anyway, thank you so much to everybody. And then see you next time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>